Hi, in this video, I will show how did I make a pure sine wave inverter using Atmega 16A AVR microcontroller with 32 kilohertz switching frequency, which is much higher compared to my previous inverter projects. Now, please note, unlike my previous inverter videos, this is not about a complete backup system that is an inverter along with the automatic changeover and battery charging, but this is only the core inverter for making a 220 volt 50 hertz sinusoidal AC from 12 volt DC. Rest of the things will be coming in my forthcoming videos. The main reason of making this video is that this uh, this time I managed to get a much cleaner and less distorted sinusoidal waveform out of the same edge bridge circuit and the same transformer that I have used in my previous project. The only difference is that this time I am using a much higher switching frequency and wrote the whole code in assembly language and use a bare AVR chip without any bootloader which gave me a better control over the timer counters and the interrupt service routines of the microcontroller. I was excited to share this little experience of improvements uh, of my inverter and I couldn't wait until I finished the whole system uh, which would take a bit longer time. The first thing I would discuss is about the microcontroller code because it has the highest impact on the output waveform. I'm using Microchip Studio for uh, writing and debugging my code. Um, before I talk about the code, let's uh, have a look into the timer counters and their features available with that Mega 16A microcontroller. There are three timers in that Mega 16A, uh, which are referred to as timer 0, 1, and timer 2, among which uh, timer 1 is a 16 bit timer and other two are 8 bit timers. Timer 1 has Two output compare registers and two output pins associated with them while timer 0 and timer 2 have one output compare registers uh, each and uh, one output pins associated with them. Now let's talk about the different modes of operations of these timers which might look very complicated at the first glance but trust me they are very simple and very easy to use. The first one is normal mode, which is the simplest one. In this mode, the counter goes to its max value and then resets back to zero. This mode is not useful for waveform generation, which we are intended to do. Second mode is clear timer on compare match, aka CTC mode. CTC mode is also similar to normal mode, with only difference is that in CTC mode, the counter top value can be specified by writing to the output compare register or OCR. Once the counter reaches the specified top value, it will reset back to zero. This mode is also not suitable for PWM generation and we are not going to discuss about it in details. The third mode is the fast PWM mode. In this mode, the counter operates in a similar way in the CTC mode. That is, it counts from 0 to the top value as specified in the output compare register and is cleared back to 0 in the next clock cycle. But in addition to that, we can leave the counter to count from 0 to its maximum value just like the normal mode and put an intermediate value in the output compare register. By doing so, the output compare pin associated to that particular timer is a reset when the counter value reaches the output compare register value and the output compare pin will set when the counter is cleared to zero or this can be opposite if we program the timer to generate an inverted PWM waveform. The fourth mode which we are going to discuss is the phase correct PWM mode. In this mode, the counter operates in a dual slope mode which means the counter up counts from 0 to the top value and then instead of suddenly coming back to 0, it starts down counting to reach 0. In this mode, when the counter value matches the value in the output compare register, the associated output compare pin is reset if the match occurs while the counter is up counting and the pin is set if the match occurs when the counter is down counting. The set and reset things become opposite if uh, inverted PWM uh, output mode is chosen. Because of its dual slope operation uh, with this phase correct PWM mode, it becomes very easy to give a dead time between the high side and low side switching. So in our project, 
we will use this phase correct PWM mode. Now let's jump into the code section. The code is very small because it is only generating the SPWM signal and uh, does not include any uh, features such as charging or changeover, battery voltage monitoring, etc., uh, which I have planned to include later. The first section of the code is initializing the IO pins. After assigning the stack pointer to the last address of the RAM, the four output compare pins labeled to as OC0, OC1, OC1A, OC1B and OC2 have been configured as output pins. This is a very important step because without doing this no matter whatever we configure in the timers there won't be any output in the PWM output pins. Then load lookup is called. In this load lookup the lookup table is stored into the SRAM of the microcontroller. The lookup table contains the value to be uh, loaded into the output compare registers of the timers for generating one half of the SPWM waveform. Once the lookup table is uh, loaded the program is written to the initialization section and init tc spwm is called in the init tc spwm all three timers are configured to run in phase correct pwm mode timer one is programmed to uh, run in 8-bit mode in order to match the resolution with the timer zero and timer two initially all the output compare pins are kept disconnected so that any random trigger does not come into the power transistors after writing some proper values to the output compare registers, OC0 pin is enabled for PWM output and OC1A is enabled for inverted PWM output. This confirms when the high side MOSFET is on, the low side MOSFET is off or vice versa. Because OC0 pin controls the high side 1 MOS and OC1A controls low side 1 MOS. 4 is added to the output computer register of timer 1 to give a, a date time of around 250 nanosecond. At the end of the timer initialization, timer 0 overflow interrupt is enabled. Inside the timer 0 overflow interrupt service routine, the output computer register values are updated from the lookup table in order to change the duty cycle sinusoidally. Next, the X pointer which uh, points to the lookup table in the SRAM is, is checked. If the X pointer is 101 hexadecimal, that is uh, the first value of the lookup table, which is 0, is loaded into the output compare register, then it indicates a 0 crossing. That means the time to switch from positive half cycle to the negative half cycle and vice versa. The present half cycle is detected by testing the configuration bit for OC0 pin. If it is disconnected, then we are in negative half cycle and we need to switch to the positive half cycle and vice versa. Uh, here is what determines the positive half cycle or negative half cycle. In the positive half cycle, OC0 and OC1A gives the complementary PWM output and OC1B is tied to high and OC2 is tied to ground. In the negative half cycle, OC2 and OC1B give the PWM out and OC1A is pulled up to high, OC0 is pulled down to ground. One last thing that the ISA does is to test we, uh, if we have reached the end of the lookup table and if it finds so, then the X pointer is reset to 100 hexadecimal from where the lookup table begins. The infinite loop here is basically doing nothing. It's just blinking an LED in the pin number 1 just to get a feel that microcontroller is working fine. Since the PWM signals are generated using only the timers and one interrupt, the CPU is left free to do other tasks. This made the SPWM output uniform and glitch free. Next, I uploaded the code into the microcontroller using Arduino Nano as an AVR programmer and AVR Dude software. Uh, I'm feeding the pulses to the HBridge driver of the inverter board uh, from my previous Sinaib inverter project. Instead of the 12 volt battery, I'm using a 400 watt power supply unit uh, with 12 volt output. This is the sinusoidal output waveform from the transformer secondary at no load condition. It's around 214 to 213 volt RMS with a 50 hertz frequency. And if I turn on uh, the 100 watt light bulb, then the output voltage is around 185 volt. The frequency has no change. At the load condition, uh, the waveform looks little better and symmetric than in no load condition. 
the no load input current is 0 0.7 ampere and if i connect a 100 watt light bulb then the current is going to 6 ampere input voltage is dropping to 11.64 volt uh, measuring to an input power consumption of approximately 70 watt the output voltage is 185 volt and the current is 0 0.33 ampere so the measured output power is 61 watt so the estimated conversion efficiency is around 87 percent so there was a little update on my future inverter project apart from the charging and the automatic changeover there are quite a few things uh, left to do to ensure stable system performance for example, uh, there is a ringing in the transformer primary side while the transformer is switching. I must suppress it maybe by adding uh, some snubber network. Otherwise, the MOSFETs will be under stress due to the high voltage spikes at every switching cycle. That's it for this video. If you found it interesting, please like this video and consider subscribing this channel. I will be meeting in the next video. Bye.